So, uh, quick question: How many people has been to Laos? Oh wow! Okay. Wow. Don't get that everywhere. Yeah. So well, very cool. Very cool. Um, so just a quick, you know, self introduction. Um, this is me, the, the cutest kid. So obviously the one in red, right? Um, so I was born in Vientiane, uh, but raised in the southern part of Laos. Um, most of my childhood. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I feel very blessed that uh, I have very, very fond memories of living and growing up in Laos. Um, my grandparents um, are all from the southern part in Jampasak province. So most of, you know, my childhood was spent um, running around wet poo, uh, hanging out with the goats and the monkeys and the notorious cats. Um, so all that, you know, changed when uh, my siblings and I were in school age. Um, so we actually went with my parents to live in the outskirts of Yangchan. And um, this was actually my first encounter with an unexplored ordinance or UXO. So one day, uh, my siblings and I were walking home from school, and right when we literally got into our home, getting ready to eat our after-school snack, um, I heard it before I actually experienced the devastation that a UXO can cause. Um, so we heard this loud explosion, and then all of a sudden knocking on my, my parents' doors. Um, people were asking for my father, who was a doctor, he was a surgeon, and he worked on victims of UXO and landmine accidents. So I rushed out uh, with my mom, and I saw one of my classmates. Um, but you know, I think what I remember the most is just the um, terrifying scream of the little girl and her mother, and then just remembering the snow white lab coat of my father's being trenched in deep blood red. So after that, my mom ushered us back into the house, um, and I later learned, um, years later, that my father had to perform a emergency amputation of the child's leg in order for her to survive. And this was actually the first time um, in my life that I remember my parents actually arguing that night. And my mother uh, said to my father, I can't risk raising my children here and not knowing if they will come home from school in one piece. And that's actually why my parents uh, decided to uproot their children when I turned six years old um, to the United States of America. So this is me in 1990. Um, and who can tell me what I'm holding? Um, steam rice. Yes, yes. Steam. Yeah, my grandmother was like, rice, they probably don't have that in the US, so I'll take this with you guys. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, um, so my aunt captured this, this photo, and you know what I remember the most was uh, driving uh, to our one bedroom apartment, which then housed four families. Um, you know, it's a very common story within the refugee and immigrant family, um, but we were driving around, we landed in Washington, D.C., and as a six-year-old child, um, I've never seen such massive building, monuments, the Pentagon, the White House. I was in awe and wonderstruck by the magnificence of our great country and how powerful, you know, the U.S. is. And I'm still, you know, breathless to this day, um, every time I'm roaming the halls of Congress. And I didn't know then um, the deep history uh, and ties that Laos and the U.S. had. I had no idea <coughs> that from 1964 to 1973, the U.S. dropped over 2.5 million tons of ordnance during 580,000 bombing missions. That's equal to a plane load of bombs every eight minutes, 24 hours a day, for nine straight years, making Laos the most bombed country per capita in history. So, you know, as you can tell from our map, this is the bombing data, and a survey just, it's almost like 100% completed in Laos right now, and what we found through the surveys from our demining partners is that every single province in Laos is contaminated, has some sort of contamination. And about half of it is considered severely contaminated. 
so why does it matter today, right? Like, so why do we do this work? Um, and I outlined it three main reasons. And the first, and I think, is what guides our work and which is our top priorities, is that UXO landmines can stay dormant for decades. In the case of Laos, Cambodia, and Vietnam, this year marks the 50th year since the last bombs were dropped. So they can stay dormant until they're triggered by a person, you know, and, and most of the time is children, and they can still kill to this day. The second reason, and we just actually dropped a uh, newsletter about the environmental impact of unexploded ordnance, and I'll just highlight briefly, um, you know, the top three impacts that UXO landmines and other explosive ordnance have on the environment. Um, the first one is the disruption of soil, right? Like when a soil is disrupted, it changes the makeup. And you know, studies have been shown that for topsoil, which is a very, very finite resource, it could take up to a thousand years for topsoil to regenerate. Which means that the soil in places like Laos, Cambodia, and Vietnam. Um, can be impacted and that can translate into less crops, right? Or crops that don't produce fruits, for example. Um, the other thing is when a bomb is detonated, and this, you know, we're working, these pictures is actually from last year's, you know, we've seen tons of detonation um, demos. And what happens is toxins that's in these bombs are released into the soil, the air, and eventually the water, right? And that is very, very harmful. Um, there has not been any studies done in Laos and Cambodia on the high level of metal that is in the soils from decades old bombs, but I know that there has been one done in Vietnam before. But good thing for anybody interested in doing, but um, it, it releases these horrible toxins that will stay there until they're cleaned up, right? Um, one of the things that um, demining teams have to do uh, oftentimes in very remote part is cut down the vegetation and sometimes they do need to burn in order to make path but that can cause like explosions um, in very very hot environment uh, it can lead to like forest fires as well which is horrible for the environment right so historical sites um, I'll get into this uh, later on and I know Mary has the voices from the plane of jars booked but um, you know, during the bombing, like in Laos in particular, um, historical sites are damaged, right? Forever damaged and, and not able to be preserved um, for future generations. Uh, the Plain of Jars, um, which, you know, is in Siem Kong, the northern part of Laos, there is 90 sites and only seven sites have already been like demined, meaning like surveyed, cleared, but the remaining still needs clearance work in order to make it safe and in order for um, archaeologists, uh, professionals to preserve those ancient historical sites that have so much meaning to the people of Laos. Uh, the last one is, you know, again, right, like when a country is contaminated by UXO landmines, um, the overall economic development and overall development of the country is hindered because of like hazards, right? It, it's, it poses a danger. Many businesses don't want to run that risk of investing in a country that is um, that has a threat of contamination. So, which leads to legacies of war and why we exist, right? Um, so, legacies is we just turned 19 this year. Um, it's just crazy. So, we're an educational and advocacy organization. Uh, the bread and butter of our work is advocacy, which is pushing for funding for UXO uh, removal, mine risk education, and victims assistance. Uh, we focus on Laos, Cambodia, and Vietnam, uh, but we support global demining, meaning when I submit requests for dollars to Congress, I ask for that overall big pot of money, but really targeting and making sure that there's funding that's earmarked for these three countries. Um, we also, you know, while we focus primarily on the um, removal of unexploded ordnance, we also do educational work that encompasses like um, the history, his historical aspect of why there is contamination. Um, we provide like different um, listings of materials. 
um, to to the public free of charge, right? Like so, vetted information, um, which I'll talk a little bit more about um, next. Well, before we begin, though, so I just wanted to introduce my team. So we're super small. Um, there's three full-time staff. So these, that's me, Alina and Danae, and this is my rock star senior executive intern, Anna. Um, so three uh, Lao American women, um, all millennials, and besides Anna, who's a Gen Z, she tells us we're old all the time. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, that, that's who's behind the work. Um, and you know, legacies have huge, huge uh, success since our founding in 2004. And most people, when they hear of legacies of war, um, they know about this, uh, President Obama's visit. So legacies really, really push hard to make this happen, right? And President Barack Obama became the first sitting US president to visit Laos and made a huge historic announcement of 90 million, um, meaning 30 million for three years. And half of that went to do the great survey work um, to ensure that we prioritize areas that's the most contaminated, right? Now, fast forward to today. Um, so as you can tell, in 2004, when we were first started, funding, and this is just for Laos, was at $1.9 million. Um, to kind of give you like a perspective on how low that is, in today's dollar, we spent on average $16 million a day to bomb Laos. And in 2004, that was a funding amount. And then the 2017 was President Obama's first installment of the $30 million, right, for the next three years. But in 2019, uh, when I became the CEO of Legacies of War, we expanded our advocacy effort to be inclusive of Cambodia and Vietnam. And we did that because we wanted to stand in solidarity with the community that we serve, right? Like we have so much support from diaspora community all over the United States, veterans community, and anyone who supports like humanitarian demining um, or who supports simply like the basic human right to live free from the fear of unexploded ordinance. So 2019, all the way till now, Funding for Laos, Cambodia, and Vietnam is at a historical high of $73 million. So that is not enough in our opinion because the cost of a plane, the B-52 bomber, in today's dollar is $65 million for just one plane. So I share that to give you some perspective on how low the funding is and why we need to work even harder and double our efforts in order to get funding as high as possible to ensure that the most contaminated areas where there's high population of civilians in these three countries um, can really, really like move forward with their life, right? Can farm in safety, children can walk to school in safety. So how, how do we do this? Um, so I'll give you a breakdown um, and invite you to join in on the fun. So how many people have ever called their congressional office? Great, awesome, okay. How many of you have actually visited with your representative or our senator? Awesome, okay. We gotta get this number up, team. <laughs> um, so in addition to our letter writing campaign, um, which we just finished one for Be My Wow, um, we also do phone calls. I meet with members of Congress to share with them the importance of humanitarian demining and to ask them to support our funding requests. Um, but the other big thing is the UXL and Demining Caucus, which is only for the House side. So this is co-chaired by um, Rep. Chrissy Houlihan from Pennsylvania and Bill Johnson from my home state of Ohio. Um, yeah, so we've been pushing for membership in this, and we're now at a historic high of 55 members. And this is bipartisan, uh, which means there's both Republicans and Democrats on this caucus. And the priority of the caucus is really to prioritize um, funding for humanitarian demining and to ensure that like, we really, really work towards just clearing as much as possible providing uh, mind risk education, meaning educating um, children you know, all over uh, the globe, not just Laos, Cambodia, and Vietnam, about the dangers of cluster munitions, uh, landmines, and other explosive, 
um, and eventually, you know, do things to um, elevate this as a priority topic for our members of Congress. Um, so, do you see any representative from the great state of Wisconsin on this list? It's a trick question, there's no one. <laughs> um, so which is why I would love all of your help to write to your representative and encourage them to join this caucus and show leadership that they support humanitarian demining. Um, so you know, feel free to reach out to my office, my card is in the back, and we can help provide you a template. We can even sit in on the meeting with you to talk about the importance of them showing leadership. And then the other way um, is, of course, uh, you all recognize Senator Baldwin, right? So um, I'll share this slide um, with, with you if you want it, because it has links to this, right? So the Legacies of War and Unexplored Ordinance, um, re re Unexplored Ordinance Removal Act, we didn't insist on the name, but I love that it's called the Legacies of War Bill. Um, but this is a bill that Senator Tammy Baldwin and Senator Jerry Moran um, are co-sponsors of. Um, and what this bill does is outline two very important things. The first one is allocating $100 million for Laos, Cambodia, and Vietnam for humanitarian demining, um, mine risk education, and victims assistance. Um, the other portion is to really recognize those who fought alongside Americans during the war. Um, to really fully give them that uh, recognition and as much as possible, we're still working on the language and the details of this, um, to provide them with the same type of benefit that we would an American veteran, right? So very, very important bill um, to follow. Right now, um, it just has been introduced, but we're working, uh, my team and I are working to um, recruit more folks to support this um, before you know, it, it can get through and get past. So the other portion of our work um, is the educational component, right? So we work with the American public to ensure that um, this history is not forgotten, right? Um, so these are our three educational initiatives, but I want to talk about Legacies Library just because I'm watching my time. Um, as you can tell, Voices from the Plain of Jars is the first book that's in our library, which Mary is holding up. And quickly, um, this is actually our origin story. So this book contains illustrations and written testimonial um, from victims that were fleeing the bombing in Xiangquang themselves. This is the only primary source documentation written by the victims of the bombings um, in history. So Legacies of War um, is the holder and of the original illustrations. We have 37 of these um, that we're trying to preserve and make sure that um, they do not weather you know, after being here for decades. And how this actually came through our door was an American named Fred Brantman. So Fred Brantman and his Lao colleague, Wun Myung Wong Pasud, and I know many people in this room knows Fred and knows many of the other folks who work to collect these illustrations from refugee camps bring them to the United States of America, and Fred actually testified in front of Congress, and this was how the American public actually knew about the American Secret War in Laos. So after that happened, after public opinion started to sway, um, during that time, um, that's how the bombing in Laos stopped. Now decades later, um, the collection of these illustrations went to the Indochina Resource Center in Washington, D.C. And a gentleman by the name of John Cavana actually had them, and John was an intern during that time. And he met with our founder, Jennifer Kamungsa, and he gave her the illustration, hoping that she would do something with them. And boy, did she did. <laughs> she started Legacies of War, and that's how we came into existence, and why we started educating the broader public, because, you know, like Jennifer, um, I really didn't know the history uh, until I was older. You know, my parents never really talked about it, and many from the diaspora community is very hard and traumatic for their families to um, tell them about, you know, this chapter in history, but it's so important to know um, so that we can actually do something about it, right? So I urge you to, um, you know, uh, check out our podcast and check out Kang Yo's classroom 
to learn a little bit more about some of the educational contents that we're putting out um, as it relates to the region and global demining in general. <laughs> now, this is our internship program and I think that's good. Okay. favorite thing that we do. We host a um, number of interns from all across the United States and even beyond. Um, Anna, who's my senior executive intern right now, she just graduated from Franklin and Marshall College in Pennsylvania. Um, so each year, Legacy supports uh, one or two interns to be a Mine Action Fellow through Mine Action Canada. So we partner with the organization in order to send um, one bright young student who's interested in uh, disarmament, demining, uh, humanitarian like um, organizations that support uh, global demining to represent us um, in Geneva or in New York, um, you know, depending on which uh, convention we're going to. Um, but you know, I think it's very, very important um, to really, really uh, encourage more young students to be involved, so that like they can eventually maybe work for us one day or one of the demining orgs. Um, but check out, you know, we, we have um, on our page as well as on our social media more of some of the works that Anna is able to do. Um, I'll also say that uh, Kamil's classroom, the sticker you'll see in the back, is actually created by Anna. So she's the illustrator, she puts all the voice together, doing fun social media things that I don't understand, but Anna is in charge of all of that. So this is a map of cluster munition contamination, and there's also one that has landmines as well. But for the sake of today, um, I just wanted to really, really share this with you because globally, at least 40 countries have unexploded ordnance or cluster munition um, contamination. And over 60 countries has landmine contamination. So this is a global issue, and is an issue that I think we really, really need to prioritize um, from all because of all the reasons that I outlined it, but the main one is um, most of the contaminations and the casualty from UXO, landmines, and other explosive ordnance are civilians. So it's upwards of 40% to 60% with the data that we're able to receive, right? So this is not, um, these are indiscriminate weapons that cannot tell the difference between a combatant or a small child. So we um, are so, so, um, this is a top, top issue for us in terms of like banning these weapons. And that's why, and we can watch this later, but um, you know, Ian already mentioned that Legacies of War is chairing the US campaign to ban landmine plus the munition coalition. So this is, these two international treaties banning these two horrible weapons um, have hundreds of people who are, of countries that have already signed on, um, including our NATO allies, right? But these two treaties, um, the United States have not signed on to them. So our policy um, on cluster bombs and landmines are more in alignment with Vladimir Putin's policy than they are with our NATO allies. And that's not okay for us. Um, so one of the, um, the, the, the responsibility that I have 
um, in representing legacies as a chair of this coalition is meeting with the State Department, meeting with our National Security Council, and urging them to make our policy more humane. Um, does anyone know how much cluster bombs we have in our arsenal today? Anybody want to guess? Get a t-shirt? <laughs> no? <laughs> I'm just saying that she's got some t-shirts to give out here, so this is a good chance to answer the question. Audience the participation, yes. I'm just going to throw a number out, because t-shirts, more than 50,000. Hmm, a little more up. But for trying, you get a shirt. Sweet. Uh, anybody else want to ask? Mm -hmm. No? OK. So currently, landmines, we have 3 million Jesus. in our arsenal. Cluster bombs, we have 1 billion submunitions. Meaning, you know, when a cluster bomb opens up, at least 400 small tennis ball size bombs are scattered all throughout. We have 1 billion submunition in our arsenal. So that's not okay, because in addition to killing civilians, it can also kill our servicemen and women as well. So I'll send that to you guys so you could watch the video of the announcement. Actually, one other thing I'll, you know, I'll just brag a little bit about legacies of war. Um, because this is historic, right? The, the USCBLCMC is a sister campaign of the International Campaign to Ban Landmine Plus Munition Coalition, um, which started in 1997, and is a Nobel Prize, a Nobel Peace Prize winning campaign. Never in its history have it been chaired by an Asian American woman, um, who's also a millennial, an older millennial. But it's a pretty big deal, right? Um, because it was a unanimous vote. So um, the other thing that we get to do is speak in at the United Nations. So this past um, April 4th, this is Jessica, my board member, who um, we asked to speak in front of all the hundreds of delegates in the room. And she shared a story about how this impacted her family's life. Um, so Jessica actually has a book called What We Inherit. And she, her uncle's plane was shot down in Laos, and it took her family like 30 plus years in order to recover his remains. So, you know, one of the benefits of humanitarian demining as well is also finding the remains of Americans who were left in Laos. So you can check that video out. Now, um, I just wanted to share this because, you know, there, um, there are so much parallels to the situation in Laos and the history to Ukraine. And I want to share this with you all because, you know, it'll tie into the final, final thoughts that I have about war and explosive remnants um, in general. But as you can tell, like up to 30% of the bombs that were dropped in Laos failed to detonate on impact, which is why we're cleaning up the mess left 50 years ago, right? In Ukraine, 30% of Ukrainian land is contaminated right now and the war is still happening. So basically, I wrote an op-ed that really outlines how, you know, from my perspective, as someone whose family uh, had to live through this war and doing this work, Ukraine's future is very bleak when it comes to contamination because we're still gonna be cleaning up these bombs decades later. So demining in Laos did not start until 1994. So that's 20 plus years after the war. Good thing with this is that demining is already started in Ukraine. In terms of like the refugees that have fled, so Laos during that time only had 2.2 million people and 25% of the population fled. In Ukraine, we're still counting, right? So Ukraine um, population is 43 to 44 million people and two million people have already fled, or 5% of the population. And we estimate um, more, and we, we're continuously monitoring with our partners who are working in Ukraine at the moment. Um, in terms of like the victims of USO, it's the same, right? It's mainly civilians. So it's like 98% of unexploded ordnance accidents are civilians after the war. In Ukraine, it's really, really hard to count like how many in particular, um, because data is really hard since the war is ongoing. But I've seen numbers 
from 700 to upwards of 1500. And I estimate that um, it's probably going to, it's probably on the higher end and we're still counting, unfortunately, with the war still waging on. Now funding level, the good news is like, since the war is at the forefront, right? It's Ukraine is making headlines. So that means that Congress is really prioritizing this. And right now, the funding level for humanitarian demining is upwards of $91.5 million. Um, I wanted to show this because, you know, without the advocacy, like advocacy or organizations like Legacies of War, Laos, Cambodia, and Vietnam will probably not even be a country that receives humanitarian demining. And that's because we're keeping this as the forefront of American consciousness and our member of Congress is consciousness, right? But one other thing that I keep reminding them is the low number of funding for the three countries, 73 million, um, is super, super low because that's like our bombs, right? This is American bombs, so we should be the top countries that prioritize this, and we should prioritize it even more. Like, I'm not saying that, you know, we should prioritize demining in Ukraine, but I'm saying that we should really, really prioritize legacy ordinance that are U.S. origins, uh, in addition to, of course, helping countries like Ukraine, Afghanistan, and other. So this is part of the illustration that is in Voices from the Plain of Jars. I wanted to show this because, you know, if you're following the war in Ukraine, and I have a link up there to the school bombing, it reminded me so much of this illustration, which is an illustration by a 16-year-old child who witnessed his school being burned um, from the explosions from the bombs, and his classmates and teachers were still in that room. So, you know, there's, it's almost like we're reliving history again as I watch like the news of the Ukraine war. This is some ways that you can help. Um, so follow our work, uh, gang help put our social media over here. Um, but really, you know, um, ask your schools to start an internship program with us. Um, it's one of the, the funnest way that you can be more directly involved in our work. Uh, write to your members of Congress, host an event, visit these countries, you know, feel free. Like we have a, um, a study trip each year and we do bring some members from the general public to join us on this. And of course, uh, stay updated on our work. And I leave you with this thought, I'm five minutes over, but um, you know, I'll say this again, like never doubt the power of a tiny group of people to make a big difference. Like Fred, bravely bringing those illustrations back to the United States. Um, you know, and of course, University of Wisconsin with Al McCoy helping to publish the book, um, Voices from the Plain of Jars, to get it out more to the public. Um, each time that you know, we have people who want to learn more about our work, I mail them this book. And really, it's hard to get a copy. I have to wait a long time to get a copy sometimes. <laughs> um, yeah. But it's, it is very, very important, right, like to be able to, um, to share this history um, with the broader public and why they should care. Um, the second thing is um, our government works for us. Our members of Congress are there representing us and our interests, and they should align their priorities with what the American people want, right? So never doubt the impact that you can make just calling your members of Congress and asking them to support humanitarian demining, asking them to not forget legacy ordinance in countries like Laos, Cambodia, and Vietnam. And then uh, finally, you know, the main reason why I like to draw this parallel between Laos and Ukraine is that clearly we as a society have not um, learned the lessons from the past, right? And once we forget histories like that of Laos, Cambodia, and Vietnam, bad history can be resurrected. So this is why we continue to do our work. Um, so here's some recent articles, op-eds that my team and I have written. So these are all clickable links that we can share with you. Um, I'll just point out, you know, uh, the first one um, is of a survivor that I, would, I had the privilege of interviewing just last year. And there's my contact info. And that's it. Thanks so much.